Hello and welcome to our discussion of Shirley Jackson and the Psychopath Test. In The Possibility of Evil by Shirley Jackson, we have such a deliciously little evil story here, and it starts off so innocuously. We meet Miss Adela Strangeworth, who is nothing, seemingly nothing, but a little old lady going on about her business, going to the grocery store, cooing at babies. Nothing could be wrong with this lady. Except there is something wrong with this lady because we soon learn that she is sending all sorts of nasty little anonymous notes to her neighbors. Did you ever see an idiot child before? Some people just shouldn't have children. And or is the wife really the last one to know? She's just sending these anonymous little notes out into the world just to upset people. In what a thought. We meet Margaret and her poor husband. Margaret starts off just like Mrs. Strangeworth. She, there's nothing wrong with Margaret. She seems happy. Dinner had been good. Margaret sat with her book on her lap and watched her husband digesting. She, everything seems just fine, except maybe it isn't. Poison him? Push him in front of a car? A train? Margaret spends this entire story musing about what terrible ways she could employ to murder her husband, smash him over the head, poison his water. Uh, she even looks for excuses, ways she could get away with it. Have you any enemies, she asked her husband. Uh, until at the very end of the story, she actually goes through with it and gives in to her impulse. Now, this week's lesson and the two stories are really about comparing the impulsive behavior seen by Mrs. Strangeworth and by Margaret to some of our modern research that we know about impulsivity and psychopathy. Most importantly, the psychopath test. Now, you can see all of this research that I have on this slide here in detail in the PowerPoint that's attached to your lesson, so I'll just let it speak for itself. What I do want to mention in this week's video overview of the lesson is the term that Robert Hare coined to describe psychopaths, that being emotionally deaf. Hare determined that psychopaths lack the ability to feel love, remorse, or empathy, at least firsthand. Hare determined that psychopaths could learn to fake these emotions and thus appear to be just like everyone else. While Hare started his research in the 1960s, the first draft of the PLCR, the psychopath test, was put into use in 1980. It was used to determine if violent inmates might reoffend if they were released on parole. I want you to think about this, and we're going to talk about this in class, but what are some of the drawbacks of this type of analysis, uh, the idea that your score on a particular test might affect your parole? Now, how does this research on the psychopath test relate to the two stories that we read this week? Think about it. If Margaret and Mrs. Strangeworth were given the psychopath test, how do you anticipate they would score? I want you to look at the 12 questions in the link provided with this week's work and think like the characters. We will discuss this in the class this week. I want you to think about whether they are faking empathy or showing it. Now, I just want to take a moment here to issue a disclaimer. Uh, as discussed in the videos, John Ronson's TED Talk and on this American Life podcast, your score on the psychopath test, especially the sample test that's available online this week, is not a mark of whether you are an actual psychopath. So take it with a grain of salt. But impulsive behavior has been studied by researchers for decades, and it really does show some very interesting things about the link between impulsive behavior and whether or not it is dangerous or not. So there is research that shows that impulsiveness pays off in many situations, and it may have an evolutionary benefit. That is that if life is short and it's dangerous, you kind of have to be impulsive if you're going to survive. Researchers at Stanford used this nifty little nine question scale to rate how a impulsive a person might be and how that might affect their decision making. This is available on the larger PowerPoint, so I'll let you go through these nine qualities here at your own pace. 
One thing I find particularly interesting about the study of impulsivity is its connection to age. In humans, impulsive behavior typically peaks in adolescence when the prefrontal areas of the brain continue to develop. Uh, So the research, as done by Stanford, shows that younger people tend to be more impulsive than older people, which I'm sure comes as no particular surprise to all of you. Impulsive behavior can also have a variety of triggers, as seen here. Now, our discussion this week and the lesson and the way that we're tying it into these two stories that we read this week comes down to the simple question of, are impulsive thoughts dangerous? Well, not necessarily. Research tends to show that it's not the thoughts and urges themselves that are dangerous, but rather the ability to control your actions. So, can Miss Strangeworth and Margaret actually control themselves or not? We will discuss this and all more in class this week, so have any questions or comments ready to go as we start. And do remember that this is just a test. Uh, If scoring high on the psychopath test, particularly this little sample, does not mean really anything at all about how your brain works, please pay attention to the interviews in This American Life podcast and the TED Talk. Thank you all. As always, never forget to cite your sources, my friends. Here are all of my sources for my studies on impulsive behavior and psychopathy.